Hello, Ebank. Uh, yeah, we are live without the intro. That's interesting. Uh, yeah, um, so hi. <laughs> hi, Ebank. Welcome to another Thursday's edition of us live, our Q&A with me, Pam Duffy, and him, not Starla. We have Brian again. Um, <laughs> hi, everyone. Yeah, um, I think most people know you, but if you want to go ahead and introduce yourself. I am Brian. You'll see me a lot throughout the, the E-Rank group and all of the other Etsy groups. Um, I do a lot of the beta testing of E-Rank's new features. A couple of years ago, I was a technical writer, and I use E-Rank for the past five years and haven't looked back. <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. If you're in the Facebook group, you'll see Brian there probably more than the rest of us. He's really he's really cool in there. Basically, I spend way too much time on social media, and I like just helping everybody, so I'm everywhere. Yep. So it looks like, let's just check, hey, Deb. did we actually go live? Uh, De Debbie's there. Um, she's saying hello with the funky intro music. Did the intro play while did we were speaking? Play. You were you were talking oh, for, while the intro was going. <laughs> oh, for goodness sake. It did because last week, right? Sorry, guys, we're, we're technical talk while we're waiting for enough people to get here. Um, but ba basically, it's a new feature on the system and it played blacks us out and plays the intro, but today it didn't black us out. So I thought we were live and we and we apparently weren't live. We're live, just not visually. They couldn't see our beautiful faces. Oh, guys, you're missing out. We're so amazing. <laughs> Hi, Irina. Hi, Amy. Hi, Woodcrafter in your pocket. Hi, MNC. <laughs> hey, it seems like we've got a cool load of people here. Hello, Deb. And we ha we did have a few people before we even got started. So I've hopefully got your questions. We're about to get back to them. And we have a question. We always have a post on Wednesday in the Facebook group for advanced questions. We have questions from there as well. So, yeah, if don't know if it's going to. It's going to be a busy one. We've got a few people in here. So if you get your questions in, but if your questions missed or we don't have time for you, then you can always sign up to the Facebook group, link in the description and leave your question on the Wednesday post and we'll make sure we get to that. And we have been having a few problems with YouTube. So if the YouTube stream drops, join us on Facebook. You'll, we're, we'll still be streaming there. But also don't forget to like and subscribe down below. Exactly. Do all the YouTubery things. So let's let's not curse it. I think the stream's looking good. We, we've had our glitch for today. Um, <laughs> I hope. <laughs> all right. So we've 139 people. I. <laughs> Hi everyone. Hi 139 people. I know. So and five likes. So guys, I I think we should get at least 25 likes before we start answering your questions that's not me being we're, we're just gonna sit here and wait exactly sit in absolute silence <laughs> <laughs> no i'm absolutely terrible at that uh what we'll do we'll head over to facebook where i've got the question up first of all um mary steed asked us when it says my tags are duplicated in E-Rank, does it mean if the category is stitch marker, I should not put stitch marker in the tags? Same for key rings or other categories. Should every tag be different from each other? Which is actually a pretty cool question. And to an extent, Etsy have answered that in their handbook. Um, I'm just trying to remember where it was. I think it's the What's ultimate game. Sorry? It's in the Keywords 101 document. See, he's even better than me. This is cool. Um, so basically, they say your categories and things like that work like tags. So if your item was in the category of rings, you don't need to duplicate with the word rings as a tag. But it does then go and say that if your item was a silver ring, you could put that, and that was a keyword phrase you were aiming for, you could put that into your tags. So you don't need to double up, but it really depends. Something like stitch markers, you've still got some space for some extra words. Um, I was 
popping in the keyword tool and there's things like cat stitch marker or crochet stitch marker or knitting stitch marker, whichever ones of those are relevant. Not entirely sure what has 20 characters because I can't spell that quickly in my head. But if it's relevant, then you could absolutely. Um, but if you won't be keen. If you have too many tags, um, so you have 20 tag ideas and you need to cut a few, you can completely cut whatever's in the category because that's already part of the search term. But if you're looking to create an exact match, then it's useful and it's useful to have it in the title because that's what people are seeing. Yeah, absolutely. You can can and should duplicate up your most important things in the title, especially if it's something like um, stitch marker. If that's what your item is, it has to say what it is in the title because that's what the customer sees. Okay. So the title's for the customer as well. And you won't get penalized if you repeat it in your title. If you said if you were in the category stitch markers and you said stitch markers in a tag, you're not penalized. It just is a waste of space. You're just not getting the so, benefit of it. Exactly. So like Brian says, if you are hurting for space in your tags, absolutely, you don't need it. If your listing is working and ranking fine and getting views, leave it alone. Um, but also if if you've not got enough tags, quite Brian's amazing for being able to find hundreds and thousands of tags. Quite a lot of the rest of us struggle when you get to about 10. We're like, I've run out of words. What I tend to do sometimes is if I'm working on something and I really want to remember what I was trying to rank for, you can save it in E-Rank and stuff in your keyword lists. But I like to put those ta those keywords right at the start of my tags. So I would duplicate up just because I've got a terrible memory. So it helps me remember what I was working on. Exactly. And if you are short on tags, you can use the keyword tool to come up with, with ideas when you scroll down. You can use the listing helper. Um, just type a kind of brief description about your listing and it'll throw a whole bunch of tag ideas at you that you can mix and match with and play around with. And ask your friends and family, ask people on Facebook, say, what would you call this item? If you were looking for this item, what would you call it? And those are perfect keywords to start playing with as well. Exactly. There's always extra things you're thinking, asking what, but the, I love our listing helper tool because that uses AI to just spit out random things that you might not have thought of. Not everything's relevant. It's only an AI tool. It's not necessarily perfect, but check it, what the tags, it's to, the keywords that it's talking about. Have a look at the search data there and go, oh, there's an interesting one. Um, and as Eatsy advises us, be thinking of who, could, who would be wanting to buy it, what kind of style it's in, the colors, the materials, all these things can work as tags as well. And synonyms. Of the product. Yeah, there's so, so many. So, yeah, I mean, Brian's, my chair makes the most awful noises. And um, Brian's absolutely right. There's usually hundreds of different words. So for those last few tags, if you can't think of anything, just put in those random words that might be relevant. Don't. If they hit and you come back in a month or two months, check the stats to see if those words are working. And if they are, perfect. And if they're not, then maybe at that point you can come up with some other words that people have been searching to find it. Exactly. It's a good place to experiment and see what works. Exactly. Right. <clears throat> so let's circle back and catch the questions we got before we were even live on air on YouTube. This is before they disappear from my screen, basically. So Debbie Gartner, if you're still in the chat, we have, she has a couple of questions about share and save tracking and links. Is there an easy way yet to see which of your items got credit on share and save beside hunting and pecking in finances? Uh, yeah, in your orders, it shows right there next to the, well, it doesn't mind. It should, you have a little, what color is it, yellow or something? Uh, green, it'll be, I believe it's green. Yeah, green, and it'll yeah. say share and save right on it. That's if someone places an order. If someone's just clicking and didn't make a purchase, um, there is no way to see that information, unfortunately. Yeah, it's not like a tracking link that we can really see what's what's going on to see if your social media is working or something. But you'll you'll see if you get the credit and sneaky 
sneaky thing that I've just discovered because the one that I checked at, um, I knew this last week as well. This was a returning customer that messaged me and asked, where's the link to your listing? So I gave her the share and save link because it's a shorter link and it was easy to grab. And I got credit for that when I sent her to the listing through messages and you're not supposed to. <laughs> yeah, you're not supposed to. Interesting. Mm -hmm. So don't be afraid. I mean, you're not, it's, it's not, not going to get you into trouble if you use the share and save link in messages because it's an easy link to grab and if you're on the app and stuff it's it's already formatted that way but yeah it was just a bit of luck I was like I shouldn't be getting credited for that but thank you Etsy. <laughs> I mean it is possible that 28 days before she had clicked on a share and save link and 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 you just happen to send the link because it because when someone clicks on a link it is valid for 30 days that's true no you're right she could have come from there there's no there's no way of knowing what they've credited it to really yeah so that's a good point hey linda um, yep it's brian c that's me <laughs> yep that's a... See, I, you don't even need me everyone's so happy to have brian it's so nice <laughs> but there's no live without you Oh, I know, because I have to push the buttons. <laughs> <laughs> That's not the reason. <laughs> um, and the second part of the question from Debbie was, I understand how to create, share and save links from a whole store and for individual listings. How do you create, share and save for a section in your store? I don't think you can do it from a PC. I think you can only do it from the app. Yes, in the app, in the app, you're able to. Uh, on a computer, there's no direct way to do that. Um, but what you can do is go to go to your section, and in the address bar at the top, just change where it says www.etsy.com/shop/your-shop-name, and then there's going to be all that stuff after it. You want to keep all that stuff after it but change the beginning part to your shop name .com slash, and then everything that was after that. And that that's actually a share and uh, share and save link. Yeah. Every single URL that starts your shop name .com is a share and save link basically. Exactly. But it, it is a bit of a faff, but absolutely everything you share from the app is formatted the correct way. Um, even like if you're sharing to your social media and stuff, they're all formatted the right way. So that's pretty cool. Yeah, very convenient. And I personally have had a lot of luck with the share and save program. Hopefully everyone else has as well. It You save 4% of the fees or you get it back. And until the 15th, the whole 6.5% you get back. It's amazing. No exactly. fees whatsoever. Yeah, I don't see any downside to it. I know some people are wary of it, but honestly, I wouldn't be. If you're sending people already from your social media and stuff, you might as well make the saving. I mean, it's an uh, incentive to send people to Etsy instead of to your own standalone website, because that's what a lot of people started doing. They started creating their own website because then it's cheaper. I don't have the transaction fee. I still have the payment processing fee. I don't have the transaction fee, though. And this is Etsy's way of saying, no, no. For only 2.5%, you could send them to us, and now it becomes worth it. Exactly. It, it's a win-win because Eatsy wants new people to come to Eatsy because if you bring people in through your links and they buy from you, they might become a regular Eatsy buyer. So that's a good thing for all of us. Yeah. So, yeah, it's, it's hopefully a win-win for everyone, and definitely up until the middle of the month it's more than worth it and <laughs> just now when you're not getting charged so exactly. yeah i really need to get on that i keep getting distracted by other things yeah, yeah the only <laughs> the only reason that i've come up with to not be on it is if you are in the affiliate program if you if you're actually an actual influencer and you have a lot of audience and you point people to different products then you're better off in the affiliate program because then you benefit from anything that people purchase um but if you're just your own shop and you're only posting your own links share and save i still have not come up with a real reason to not be part of the program it's just money sitting on the table if that's what you're doing yep and with the affiliate because i'm i'm in both <laughs> if you're sharing someone else's link 
you can't use a share and save link. Nobody can. Like if I posted a share and save link to Brian's shop, he would get the credit for it because yeah. there's no way of tracking that I sent the link. So if I was sharing other people's stuff, then I would use the, the influencer link. If I was sharing my own stuff, then I would share my own link, my share and save link, basically. Exactly. Yeah, it's all about it's all about finding the other little avenues of paying less fees or making money through Etsy and the affiliate program's great, but the share and save, it's been it's been wonderful. <laughs> well, yeah, and Brian's definitely high enough volume to tell you when when something's worth it or not. Definitely, exactly. that must be when that's working. That must be saving a good bit. So. <laughs> Not, like normally it's thousands in listing fee or in, in uh, transaction fees, but this brings that down by quite a bit. And it's just, it's nice. Any little thing, <laughs> anywhere you could save is extra profit in your pocket to, to put back into your business or do whatever you want to do with. Take a vacation. Absolutely. Yeah. And I think it hopefully encourages people as well. As I say, I, I get distracted by shiny different things and I haven't been doing to my shop what I should have been doing to my shop. But there was in my head, I was going, oh, yeah, well, I could totally do a push about gifts, a push about Valentine. You know, I could push a bit more, but I'm very bad and I haven't. Mm -hmm. I, I, I had plans. This year was going to be a year and then I got distracted thinking about other things. But I hopefully it convinces other people to, to push a bit more, to build up their social media um, yeah, even, even, it, even if you're a smaller seller, every little bit helps. If you're paying, if you're paying only fifteen dollars in fees instead of twenty, that makes a difference. Absolutely, hey, it's money in your pocket. An extra five dollars is it's your money. Yep. Um, here we go. Corgi Best Pal is asking a. Bestseller design with the text Marion Bright has some of the tags Farm Fresh Truck, Believe Shirt, Cousin Crew, Santa Shirt. Please explain if these keywords are considered relevant. Um, I assume you're looking at other people's listings and trying to see if, if their listings have relevant tags. Um, it really depends we can't see the shirt so that's it but a shirt with the text merry and bright sounds like a christmas type thing so a santa shirt yes cousin crew could be something relevant to them um you know like their followers that is a cool thing if you build up enough of a following that your followers have a name that you give them and they go looking for that name that's you've really got your branding and your social media on point like swifties yeah. Oh, exactly. <laughs> yes. Yes. If well, like like alphas, if you're if you're a star, a star <laughs> that's it. But that's yes, if you episode. have some... mm -hmm. <laughs> But yeah, it's really cool. So but we can't see if they're relevant. We we don't necessarily know what's relevant for that listing, but you can't look at other people's listings and just go, oh, they've got all these tags, therefore I must copy all these tags, because it might not be relevant for you. As, as we said, I don't know what Cousin Crew is, but if it's like Swifties, if it's their tribe name and has nothing to do with the T-shirt, then no, that's not relevant for something you make, but it might be very relevant for them. So... They could yeah, also we... have copied that from someone else and just assumed that it was relevant. The same way that you're wondering, is this relevant? They could have just copied it and not not cared one way or the other. If you're using terms that are irrelevant, you're really just wasting space. You're not going to get the clicks from that. So, Yeah, that is such a good point that in plenty of places, some people have given terrible advice to just copy the tags of best-selling things no for many reasons <laughs> firstly as we've said it's not necessarily relevant to you it might not even be relevant to them that's a very good point but the other thing is it's a bestseller which means that that listing and that shop has a very high score on Etsy Etsy really likes it it's got good customer experience it's probably got great reviews so it has what I call like more ranking power it can rank for keywords that are bigger, have more competition 
than your shop can. So if you just copy their tags, you will not show up in the same searches as they do. You'll still as see small... the same searches just on page 1,000 instead of page 1. <laughs> exactly. You'll not turn up anywhere decent. So as a smaller shop, we have to, yeah, be inspired by them, but find our own niches, find our own little footholds to get into. Exactly. Yeah, just copying someone else's keywords does not guarantee success at all. It's it's a good starting point if you can't come up with anything. It's good to kind of look at what they're doing, kind of take ideas from that. But if you're just going to copy someone and try and expect the same results that they're getting, assuming their results, you don't even know if they've even sold anything using that keyword. Um, but if you're just assuming that you'll get business because you're using these great keywords that someone else uses, that's that's just not how the algorithm works. It's not just if because everyone can't be in the first position on the first page and just by copying someone unless you have the clout unless you have the sales history unless you have the traffic stats unless you have the um customer customer marketplace score all that type of stuff you're really not going to to rank the same but it's it's a great starting point to kind of figure out what people are searching for for that type of product if you sell something similar yeah, it's not a bad idea to look at their tags at all. Looking at other people's tags is a great thing. And sometimes you might see things that be like, oh, hang on, that's, what was it, Farm Fresh Truck? Their T-shirt doesn't have anything to do with a Farm Fresh Truck, but it looks like a really good keyword. So I'm going to make a shirt that has Farm Fresh Truck. I, I don't... and. We're not given advice to take these tags. I've not looked up the keywords or anything. I have no idea if anything is copyright, but you know, it's an idea you can look in and go, hey, I could make something even more relevant. Their tags, their keywords are a bit not good for their listing. So, because even a bestseller, their keywords might not be good because they might be bringing in all their own traffic and they might not be getting anything from search. Or they might just have one keyword across all of their tags that is actually good and the rest are not actually doing anything at all. Whenever. Exactly. That's those those few lucky shops that are on the first page for wedding ring. Doesn't matter what the rest of their keywords are. They're probably doing well for wedding rings. So there's no point trying to copy them. <laughs> they just obviously have very awesome products that people like. Exactly. I suppose it's very similar to looking at whatever casting Jason Momoa is looking to do when he's looking for his next role and going, I'm going to go in and I'm going to apply for Aquaman and all these other things. And why am I not getting any roles? You have to start on the um, start TV by looking like Jason Momoa. I think everybody should aim to look like Jason Momoa. <laughs> <laughs> But but yes, the, there's <laughs> there's a lot more to it than just copying what the big the big bugs are doing. Exactly. Um, but snooping at them is good. It's also really can it can be cool to look at their social media or look at their reviews and things to see what the pain points are. If customers are saying, "I love this, but the material's not the best. Can you make something in better material? I wish it came in green. Can you do something in green? You know, see what they're, what money they're leaving on the on the floor there. <laughs> yeah, it's a great way to find other ideas is by looking at other people's products and going through those reviews, seeing what people are actually looking for. Yep. Exactly. All right, that was that was all our before stream questions. Yep. Um, uh, oh, now I'm going through all the all the people pointing out that, that we started very loud. Sorry, guys, <laughs> I have no control over that. Um, <laughs> um, I should have been. Oh yeah. Um, see, Amy's saying I will just do this just now. I think we, Brian mentioned it as well, but just make sure. Didn't realize that we'd continued on Facebook last week. Occasionally, technology sucks um and things happen so if anything happens we should be dual streaming to facebook as well so if you lose us there's links in the description for the facebook group but fingers crossed <laughs> hopefully the start was our our, our mistake for the week <laughs> and the resolution um, seems to be keeping up so that means we're probably good 
<laughs> yeah, don't curse it. But I, um, many years ago, I worked in a company packing light bulbs, which is random. But at the start of every box, when the bosses weren't watching, we would break a light bulb just to get it out of the way. <laughs> probably not the best way to do things but i always just feel like okay the bad things have already happened that's it out of the way <laughs> we've all just worked some really random jobs it's crazy i think my worst one oh, and we were paid nothing but you know those stencil books that you get for a painting and stuff it's just like loads of stencils yeah my job was to poke the middle bits out of the stencils that the machine hadn't cleared properly Okay. That was fun. <laughs> it's great being a student in the summer and you, you just take any job that's offered. I worked at a bottle cap factory one summer and as a student and it was just, I just looked at them and made sure that they were centered. Like the printing on the thing. Was yeah. <laughs> it's fun, isn't it? <laughs> fun when you can't trust computers. It's great. <laughs> we take the machines jobs. Yay. Um, okay, let's dive into the questions we've got. And guys, we have another half an hour, so get your questions in. Um, but Grizz Fam Scott, I'm good. This is not fair. Like, I usually just leave Styla to say all the names because I'm terrible. Um, has anyone noticed when you're shopping on each scene and something says local, it's not local? I live in Vermont and the shop's located in New, Z New Jersey. Is this a glitch? Has anyone seen this? I've I've seen this, and that that is a glitch that's happening. They're, they're they some they they play with the locations a little bit. So I'm in Canada, and sometimes across Canada, all of Canada will be considered local. They do that because in Europe, everything is so close. If you're in Italy versus Spain, those are two completely separate countries. But if you're in if, if you're looking for something in Italy, it's close to you. And so that would be considered local. If you're in Spain, something in Spain will be local. In the US and in Canada, it's so vast that we see each each province or each state or each territory as something completely different. But if you're in the US, then US is local. And that's what that's what they keep kind of going back and forth for because they're trying to make it work for for all around the world. So the same the same thing work for the UK as works for the US. And unfortunately, it's not a one size fits all kind of world when it comes to, to size. Yeah, I, I suppose local is sometimes people would count local as it's in the same country. But yeah, yeah that's that's a very european way of thinking of things um, some countries are a little bit bigger than we can imagine so Most yeah states are larger than every country in europe <laughs> yeah pretty much well i think someone someone told me but from the closest bit of the states to the uk is closer than going right across the states yes. which is like yeah i can't even imagine that <laughs> crazy and yep. people drive that. <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess all you can do is give Etsy some feedback that you would prefer local. If you're buying local, you'd like to buy in your state. Um, I think everybody's a bit a bit different with, with what they consider and local. Sometimes that is working properly. If you're in Texas, it'll only say it's local if it's somewhere else in Texas. It won't say if you're in Austin, then that's local. They'll say all of Texas. Um, but but they keep going back and forth and so it's a glitch that you in the us were seeing what the people in europe are supposed to be seeing but then there's places like in canada where ontario for example is bigger than all of europe combined <laughs> <laughs> local here is not actually local i'm showing off <laughs> like 28 hours or something to drive to the other side of the province it's ridiculous oh but it's like that in the highlands of scotland as well fair <laughs> That's because it's not straight. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it's it's very small, but the roads are special. <laughs> They're special. <laughs> I was on holiday with my mum last year, and we were laughing about Highland Miles. And basically, we were going to trying to find this restaurant in the next village, and the signpost said five miles. The rest of the world would say that's five minutes. Two hours later, we we're going. Where is the <laughs> probably? 
possibly I'd got a bit lost, but you just and that's why no. most of the world stopped using miles. Oh, <laughs> it is that makes sense? <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, oh. Nessarine, sorry if I've said your name wrong. Does duplicating a listing and saving it in a gift section get a boost from Etsy? That is a good question, but as as Brian, I can see his head going. <laughs> you won't get a boost, but Etsy have sort of been advising that we should do this if we have giftable items. So. A lot of it is just that you can change the tags to more more gifting and that kind of thing, have it in different sections. The advantage is there is a new listing boost, which is only, it's only a minuscule boost, but it is a little bit of a 